Hey guys, my name is Oscar Mikey, and today we're talking about Battlefield 2042 and its first season of content. We finally have new content for this game. It's about time. What is? It's been like eight months since launch. It's been it's been absolutely crazy. Anyway, I've been playing a little bit of this new map and just exploring it and using the new specialist, and I want to talk through it with you guys a little bit, show you guys what's going on. So the new map is called Exposure. It takes place in my home country, Canada, in BC on the west coast, in some kind of mountain range. So apparently there's been some kind of landslide at a military installation, and both teams are kind of going at it, fighting over this uh, installation, where apparently there's some kind of high-tech secret weapon being developed there. And honestly, the news is pretty much all good. It's a decent map. It's a pretty good map, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's safe to say that Exposure is better than all of the launch maps for 2042. It feels like more traditional kind of battlefield level design, but let's get into it. Let's see what's going on here. So one interesting addition with Exposure is a new vehicle and it's a stealth helicopter. And it's actually really cool. It's like a silent helicopter. It's almost completely silent when it flies around. Unless you happen to be like really close to it, you can't hear it at all. You just see it buzzing across the sky and it's not making any noise. And it's equipped with these bombs or these rockets that you can fire down onto the ground below. And they make this crazy screaming sound when they're dropping. It's really, really terrifying actually. The map itself is just kind of a big uh, cliff face, and it actually reminds me of a couple of old maps. It reminds me of Caspian Border with all of the foliage and like uh, the rolling hills on top. And all that grass and foliage is like yellow, which reminds me of Aras from Battlefield 5. And it also kind of reminds me of Siege of Shanghai, just because of all the verticality. You can get up on top of the skyscrapers and stuff. And it's the same kind of deal here. You can stand right on the edge of the cliff and stare all the way down and there's the whole area is playable. You can play on top, you can play on the ground below, or you can play kind of in the middle. And uh, there's tunnels going through like the underground part, like halfway between the surface and the riverbed down below. Up top in the fields, there are two pairs of objectives. A1, A2, and F1 and F2. In my time playing this map, I've noticed that not a lot of people like to fight in those areas. Not a lot of people like to play on these flags. So once they're capped, they usually stay the same throughout the entire match. These are just kind of boring, standard, um, like installations or facilities with a, with a handful of buildings and roads going in and out of them. They're not really special. They're not really interesting at all. When you start moving downhill though, that's when things get interesting. D1, C1, and B1 are all kind of halfway down towards the riverbed and they're all underground. They're inside the cliff face and a lot of fighting happens around C1. C1 is kind of like the choke point where both teams meet. There's lots of tunnels and underground hallways that lead up to C1, or you can take uh, zip lines up the cliff face and kind of shimmy your way or parachute your way down on top of this kind of observation deck where C1 is, and you can jump down in there. But you can pretty much count on the other team is gonna try and funnel in there, and it's just gonna be a big battle for C1. This area in particular reminds me a lot of Operation Metro, just because of what a meat grinder it is, what a buzzsaw it is. It gives me those kinds of vibes. Uh, B1 and D1 are similar, but they're just kind of off on their own. They're like underground office areas and stuff. And then down at the bottom of the hill, this is another kind of hot spot. There's always kind of a tug of war going on between E1 and E2. E1 is higher up and E2 is down lower. And in all the matches that I played, it's pretty much a constant power struggle between these two uh, capture points. But if you can catch the enemy team off guard, you can get down there and capture one of them. But I guarantee as soon as you do, the other team is going to be parachuting off the cliff face right down to you. And it just, it's never ending. Uh, make sure you watch the skies for people parachuting in. The new specialist is named Liz. She brings a special rocket launcher to the battlefield. This one is TV guided. You can remote control this thing and it has a boost function. So once you get your target squared up, you can hit left shift and that will boost the rocket towards your target. It's a pretty cool weapon, pretty useful, but unfortunately it doesn't do that much damage. It is useful for making aircraft kind of buzz off if they're hassling you too much. And if you get a bunch of Liz's together all using the rockets at the same time, then you can really decimate some armor with that. Uh, after you fire it, it's kind of like a special ability. You don't need ammo to refill it. It just kind of constantly recharges on its own. So that's kind of nice. And that's all there really is to Liz. She's uh, kind of cool. I like her rocket launcher and uh, yeah. Well, that's just a quick overview of Exposure. I just wanted to go over it really quick with you guys. I'm actually really enjoying playing this map. It's a bunch of fun, and I think it's a really good direction for the game to be heading. And another bright spot of this update is they got rid of all the cringy voice lines for the characters. So on the end screen, nobody says anything. Everybody just kind of walks forward towards the camera and then like 
just poses or whatever, which is good. It's a good step. It makes these people feel a little bit more serious, like they're actually involved in some kind of serious conflict instead of just memeing around. I haven't unlocked the Val yet. I'm looking forward to unlocking that and getting some playtime on it. But yeah, this is great. This is a good excuse to boot up the game again if you haven't played in a while and uh, come back in and check it out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will catch you guys in the next video.